All right, welcome to part five of my series looking at Carl Bau's creation in the 21st century. Uh, this this episode is the preponderance of evidence featuring Dr. John Hefner. Uh, he was talking about human populations and has now moved on where he's he, he's going to start discussing mitochondrial Eve. So I'll get started. And our professor is ready to demonstrate this to us. Well, as early as uh, January 11th, 1988, Newsweek magazine, in an article entitled The Search for Adam and Eve, they looked at mitochondrial DNA, which only comes through the mother's line. And uh, they said, trained in molecular biology, they, these scientists, looked at an international assortment of genes and picked up a trail of DNA that led them to a single individual woman from whom we are all descended. Wow. Well, when I read that, I was reminded of Genesis uh, 3.20. Yes. Adam called his wife's name Eve, for she was the mother of all living. Yes. And they actually called her Eve, too, but they didn't mean the biblical Eve, just the first woman. I hope you guys caught that, uh, what, what he did just there. So, he talks about mitochondrial Eve, and then he says that the scientists didn't call her Eve after the biblical Eve. They called her Eve because she was the first woman. Um, implying, this is the implication, that atheists, secular scientists are coming around to believe that there was a first woman, okay? Whether, you know, it, I've heard this explained by other creationists, and so it, ultimately what they're trying to imply is that, you know, creationists have always said there was a first woman and a first man, and Evolutionist always says, no, 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 there was a long lineage of whatever, whatever. Um, and now the evolutionists are starting to believe that there was a first woman, as if this ape, some ape man, ape thing, gave birth to a human that was the first woman, um, you know, their grand mutation. And they're just saying, we only differ in, you know, the age of which we say this existed, or we only differ in the cause of this. We say God, they say evolution. Um, but the reality is, mitochondrial Eve in no way was the first woman. Okay, it's not like there was no other women. Mitochondrial Eve could have had sisters. Um, she certainly had a mother. Uh, she could have had aunts. She could have had cousins, female cousins, um, that did not leave descendants. Uh, and this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hopefully, I, this is gonna be a little bit of a ramble. And I think I found a way I can explain it that makes a little some sense because there's some confusion about what this mitochondrial. I mean, obviously, as he did with the sheep and the goats. Uh, he doesn't quite, under, well, he, I think he does understand he's implying this for, for an, another reason. But anyway, so let's look at a good, a good analogy for mitochondrial uh, genealogy, uh, phylogeny, is surnames. Okay, the last names, since traditionally in Western culture, last names, surnames have been passed down father to son, father to son. So, um, and this this is very similar, very analogous to how... Um, mitochondrial DNA is passed mother to daughter, mother to son. But I mean, only only the mothers are, are transport. Are only the mothers are are um, this lineage can be traced back through through the female lineages. So, um, so like a surname. So if if a fa if a male with a particular surname has you know a son and three daughters, the son will carry that name on. The daughters will presumably marry and have a different surname. Um, likewise, if they have no if. Um, if if a lineage of a particular surname has no sons, then that surname can go extinct, or you know his brother will have children, male children that will carry it on. It's not, so it's very much analogous to it. So let's just just for sheeps and giggles, take the surname Hefner. Okay. Now I found uh, just an, I I didn't go to look into too much detail, so I'm gonna I'm, I'll explain where I'm making this up and where where I'm going from fact, um, because it doesn't matter if I'm I'm not making it up as in it, 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 what I'm making up is how how it really works with with surnames. Um, so the name Hefner, uh, John Hefner, as we're, we're listening to, um, the way the name stems from uh, is it 12th century, I believe, uh, if I recall correctly, Hofner, um, which was a potter. It's a it's a, an old German term for a potter. Um, it was originally uh, a trade name, so that if a father a, a person who was a potter had sons and they didn't take up potting as a profession. Their name would not be Hovner. Um, anyway, it was kind of a, a weird way. And then it eventually it became established as a, as a lineage, despite the, the person's um, thing. But if we were to take a genealogy and let's say we traced back, you know, this is where I'm kind of going from into the, you know, 
hypothetical here, and say that John Hefner decided to trace his lineage back. And he traced back the Hefners with two Fs, H-E-F-F-N-E-R, and he traced the Hefners back to a, I don't know, Frederick Hefner in a town in Bavaria, in Bavaria who was the first Hefner with two Fs um, because he moved to this region in Bavaria, um, changing the name from one F Hefner H e f n e r to the two f's because it was typic- it was common at the time in say the 16th century to change your name to the spelling how it would be spelled locally if you mu- immigrated to a new region um, the pronunci- how your name was pronounced how it would be spelled locally was how the name would be your name would be spelled so he could trace his lineage back to the first Hefner and all living Hefners with two F's in their name trace back to Frederick Hefner in 17th century Bavaria okay right that makes sense so all that's a, that's a single lineage now there may have been other Hefners with one F that moved to the same region changed their name to the two F's or at different times that they subsequently left no descendants so those Hefners even though they are also distantly related um by the virtue of the name, Th- that particular double F lineage left no other descendants. So the all Hefners come down to this one Frederick Hefner. So would it be fair to say that Frederick Hefner, 17th century Bavarian Frederick Hefner, popped into existence with no no ancestors? No, there was no other males around him. No, you know, he didn't have a father, didn't have a mother. Um, was he created independently? No. Um, the point is, is that he had a father whose last name was Hefner, just with one F. Um, he may have even have brothers who kept the one F spelling, who now have sons with a, that name is perpetuated on, um, not using the two F thing. Does that make sense? So it doesn't mean that the first Hefner was not the first human being, okay, by any stretch. Likewise, mitochondrial Eve, the first all human beings on the planet trace their lineage back to her. Okay? That doesn't mean that that she was the only woman around. Um, she probably, undoubtedly, lived in a village filled with women. She had a mother. She had aunts and probably had sisters and everything like that. The point is, is that if you trace back, it's, it's almost more of a... I mean, there, there probably. I mean, there were probably. There was an actual physical person who would be who would be mitochondrial Eve. But when they do these calculations, these are these are mathematical constructs. Okay, this is looking at it, saying, okay, you know, every time you step back a generation, you know, you go back a generation, you go back a generation. Eventually, you're going to converge on a single point. So, looking for all of you know everybody in all human beings, mitochondrial DNA. Looking at okay. If we take this and, and, and create a tree, how far back does this take us? And it goes back to 100, 120,000 years. There's been some debate about that. It, again, it doesn't mean that there weren't, there's not, we're also descendants of other individual women throughout history, obviously. Um, but there's one woman who contains all of the genetic, who contained all of the mitochondrial diversity in modern humans. Hopefully that made sense. Yes. And so they call her mitochondrial Eve. Well, in 95, U.S. News and World Report reported that genetic Eve gets a genetic Adam. And a scholar in uh, University of Arizona says we're finding that humans have very, very shallow genetic roots which go back very recently to one ancestor. Uh, this is a bombshell in the courtroom. Yeah, this is contradiction of what they, the expected testimony would have been, I think. I, uh, how so? How is, how, is, how is this against a traditional acceptance of the theory of evolution. Um, this this is exactly what evolution would predict. Now, it also is what your Bible says, roughly, um, but that's a whole different story. But the point is, is that th- this this is not contradictory to the theory of evolution. Evolution does not predict thousands of independent origins for modern humans. And in '98, uh, calibrating the mitochondrial clock, Science Magazine said. Mitochondrial Eve lived uh, a mere 6,000 years ago, so we've got 98, and then uh, this is uh, in uh, 07 or sometime in that, and so forth. It's really unfortunate that there's no way we can actually look up the original reference that he's talking about and actually see what it says um, to see what what uh, Ann Gibbons really meant. Did 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 was she saying 
That mitochondrial Eve probably lived 6,000 years ago? Hmm. Well, it turns out this paper by Ann Gibbons is actually from a talk given at the, given at the first international workshop on human mitochondrial DNA, uh, given in 1997. So, uh, first of all, a 13-year-old paper dealing with molecular biology might as well be from uh, a century ago, uh, given how fast the field is changing. So, right there, um, sh you should you should raise a red flag on just on the age of the paper. But um, as is typical with the, with creationists trying to present science, uh, the paper doesn't say what what he wants it to say. And this paper is what this paper is about. This is actually a paper reporting potential errors in using mitochondrial DNA molecular clock dating um, as an absolute because. For example, she reports uh, a couple of different mutation things that can happen that can screw up results. She also refers to things like hot spots, portions of the mitochondrial genome that mutate faster than the rest of it does. And then, because this, remember, this was a talk. Okay, this was this was being presented, you know, before an audience. Uh, when she makes when she makes the statement that using the new clock she would be a mere six thousand years old, I would guess that that's the part in her notes that said "wait for laughter." You know, okay? She was saying if one of these hot spots had been used to date mitochondrial leave, she would only be six thousand years old. But a bing, okay? Her next line, the very next sentence, no one thinks that's the case. Okay, no one thinks that's the case. So this was not reporting mitochondrial Eve was only 6,000 years old, as Mr. Hefner is trying to show. Uh, that, it's, this it's, is a bombshell. It, it's, it's supporting evidence for the, for the case that the Bible makes. But it has been ignored by the opposition. By and large. And that's why all the research he's mentioned, all of the studies he's cited so far, are all from, you know, Answers in Genesis or the Institute for Creation Research or the Discovery Institute or the Creation Evidence Museum, right? None of it was from uh, evolutionary biologists. And, and, and that's very know, unfortunate. Truth to me is like corks in a swimming pool. You can hold them down only so long. And you can hold two corks down, but when you start getting three and four dozen, it's hard to keep them all down and suppress them. And you know this how. Uh, you often play with corks in your swimming pool because uh, you know you know what that makes you? It makes you a cork soaker. Uh, of course, uh, San Antonio Express News in July of 06 reported all humans found to share a not-so-distant ancestor. As quoted in Nature, the world's most prestigious scientific Exactly, journal. and what they're doing is basically reporting the same thing. Uh, somewhere between 5,000 and 6,000 years ago, they're finding everyone has the same set of ancestors. You see, wow. we have two parents, uh, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great. Well, you can't keep going back, getting more behind you than there are present, unless you start converging. And that's exactly what the DNA studies have shown. John Hefner's a mathematician, so I know for a fact he, he knows he's talking shit on this. The Olson paper in Nature was a mathematical construct, a hypothetical given allowing that the entire human population has always been a single interbreeding gene pool, which he acknowledges in that paper it's not. Okay, this was a mathematical construct on saying how how recently in a computer simulation could our least common ancestor have existed. That's what he's saying. That's what the paper was about. Uh, Hefner is a liar. Uh, actually, those sons came from Noah, so depending on how well they want to fine-tune it, they can go to four or they can go to one, yes. and then to Adam through that way. It all adds up. The Bible must have been right all along. Must have been right so, all along. You know, this is my area of interest, so I'll spend a little more time just crunching the numbers again, because I think that it is so good to have a test. I mean, a calculator is unbiased. Sure. And you can just punch in the claims and see if you get what we know to be true. You know, about six and a half, six point six billion people on the planet. And the jury is listening. At the time of this broadcast, yes. You're making the case. That's right. A calculator is unbiased. If you, pr if you punch into it a whole bunch of numbers... Uh, from a bunch of made-up sources and lied about scientific articles, you can get almost any result you want. Uh, the reality is, what he's good at here, what he's doing here, and what he's presenting is lying, biased material, uh, force-fit. He's taking good science and he's force-fitting it uh, to to fit his interpretation of the Bible. And that's that's all he's doing.